we can hear the music. Možemo videti svetlo, možemo čuti muziku. We are able to touch another human being. Možemo da dotaknemo drugo ljudsko biće. We can smell the blooming flower. Možemo da pomirišemo cvet koji procvetava. We can taste delicious food. We are able to know the world. Možemo da okusimo ukusnu hranu i da poznamo svet oko sebe. We are able to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, to touch. We are able to accurately perceive the world. Mi možemo da dodirnemo, da omirišemo, osjetimo ukus i tako dalje. Jednostavno smo mogućnosti da doživimo svet. Our perception appears to be a part of our being that never falls. Naša percepcija je deo našeg bića. Sun is rising on the east, white is white, black is black, irrespective if we ate salad or steak last night, irrespective if we slept five hours or eight hours. Sunce izlazi na istoku i belo je belo, crno je crno, bez obzira da li smo mi spavali ili nismo. We live with the assurance that we are able to perceive reality irrespective of the state of our brain. I mi živimo s ubeđenjem da mi možemo da doživimo i spoznamo realnost bez obzira na stanje našeg mozga. But is that true? Ali da li je to zaista istina? Let me tell you four brief stories. A, dozvolite mi podlim četiri kratke priče. Dr. P has been experiencing difficulties in his marriage. Nothing new in this world. Dr. P a, je počeo da a, ima probleme u svom braku. But his troubles were quite peculiar. He was able to see his wife, but he wasn't able to recognize her. Njegov problem je bio u tome što je on mogao da vidi svoju ženu, ali ne i da je prepozna. He would see her, but unless he feels her scent or hears her voice, he wouldn't be able to tell that that's his wife. On je mogao da je vidi, ali ako ne bi bio mogućnosti da da omiriše način na koji ona miriše ili da čuje njen glas, on ne bi mogao da potvrdi da je to njegova supruga. I ovo je bilo veliki pritisak na njihov brak. I on je otišao kod neurologa koji je uspio da utvrdi njegovu diagnozu prozopagnozija. Prozopagnozija. Or inability to recognize faces we see faces but we are not able to recognize ili prosto nemogućnost da prepoznamo lice vidimo lice ali ne prepoznajemo ko je to this example has been described in a book the man who mistook his wife for a hat by dr oliver sacks i knjigu je napisao oliver sacks i pod naslovom čovek koji nije mogao da razazna svoju ženu od kape And it is very interesting there is a discrete lesion in the brain that causes this disease. I vrlo interesantno postoji kao mali zarez u mozgu koji uzrokuje ova oboljenja. And that problem is in lower part of our temporal lobes. I ovaj problem se nalazi u donjem delu naše temporalno grežnje. Trebalo temporalno grežnje. We remember from yesterday all the lobes of the brain. Sigurno. So we are able to perceive if we if we have a healthy structure of our brains. Dakle možemo da spoznamo stvari ako imamo zdrave strukture u mozgu. But if certain structures are damaged, our ability to perceive accurately is severely impaired. Ali ako su određene strukture povređene, onda naša mogućnost da doživimo realnost je jako snižena. First story, a man who mistook his wife for the head. Prva priča, čovek koji je nije mogu da razazna ženu od od kap. Second story. Druga priča. We are in a dark, quiet room. Nalazimo se u tamnoj, tihoj sobi. There is a physician, a teacher physician, and several students, and there is a nice, well-groomed lady in her fifties. Tu se nalazi. Doktor sa studentima i žena u svojim 50-im godinama. This is very nice lady. She is a teacher. They have some casual conversation. Everything sounds completely fine. 
O, jedna fina dama, lepo obučena, ona je učiteljica, imaju jednu neobaveznu konverzaciju i sve izgleda kao da će biti dobro. But then they ask her why is she here and she starts telling her story. I onda je doktor pitao zašto je ona tu i onda je ona počela da deli svoju priču sa njim. You know, I have these neighbors. They live one floor above me. I ona kaže, znaš, ja imam komšije iznad sebe. And those neighbors, they're actually listening to my thoughts. I te komšije, oni osluškuju moje misli. So whatever I think, they know about it. I šta god ja da mislim, oni znaju o tome. While students were trying not to laugh, a physician, the physician asked, so how they do that? A dok su studenti pokušavali da ne prasnu smeh, a profesor je pitao kako su, odnosno doktor, kako su, oni to mogu da rade. And she explained that there are certain lines that are going between apartments and are connected to her TV and that's how they can listen to... to ja ona objasnila da postoje određene konekcije koje idu između njihova dva apartmana i povezane sa televizorom i na taj način oni to mogu da urade da čitaju misli. A person doesn't have to be a physician to recognize that something is deeply wrong here. Osoba ne mora da bude lekar da bi shvatila da nešto ovde stvarno nije u redu. This lady has a disease that we call schizophrenia. I ova žena ima bolest koju zovemo šizofrenija. Now, for many ages this disease was considered to be demon possession or, or some other spiritual problem, which I'm not ruling out completely. I um, kroz mnoge vekove ova osoba je smatrana a, problemom koju uzrokuju demoni a, međutim but today we know that there is a problem in a neurotransmitter called dopamine and also in microstructure of frontal lobes a i mi znamo da danas se problem nalazi u neurotransmiterima i dopaminu koji su u prednjem delu mozga and also the difference between patients with this disease and healthy population can be seen on functional mri a, ali takođe se magnetnom rezonancom mogu ustvrditi razlike između pacijenta koji nema takvih problema i onoga koji ima. So, another problem with perception. In order to perceive, we do need to have healthy microstructure of our brain and healthy biochemistry of our brains. Još jedan primer kako da bi smo mogli da doživimo sve toko sebe pravilno, mi moramo da imamo zdrave strukture mozga. Third story. Treća priča. Somebody in the first half of the uh, 20th century asked, is light necessary, is exposure to visual stimuli necessary for development of, of vision? A neko u 20. početkom 20. veka postavio pitanje, da li je za razvoj vida neophodan, uh, neophodna stimulacija svetlom? So I apologize for um, everyone who is a cat owner. A ja se izvinjam svakome ko ima mačku kod kuće including my hosts. A čak i svojim domaćinima. Uh, but these guys basically closed eyes of, of cats uh, since birth and kept them for some time with eyes closed and then opened their eyes to see if they will be able to see. A ono što su, a, oni koji su radili eksperiment radili, zatvorili su oči mački i ona je ne znam koliko dugo tako imala zatvorene oči, nekoliko sedmice da vide da li će se oči razvijati, da li će moći da vidi posle toga. And of course these cats were not able to see. I naravno mačke nisu bile mogućnosti da vide. Despite having completely normal brain structure and normal brain biochemistry. Iako su imali vrlo zdrave strukture mozga i a, biohemijski sastav So in order to perceive accurately, we need healthy brain structure, healthy chemistry and appropriate exposure to stimuli. A, tako da da bismo imali dobru uh, percepciju, shvatanje realnosti, moramo da imamo zdrave strukture mozga, biohemijski sastav kao i stimulus koji dolazi iz polja. The fourth story. Četvrta priča. I, I am certain that some of you were uh, volunteers in this, in this experiment. Uh, siguran sam da ste svi bili volonteri u ovom eksperimentu. Or at least some of you. Ili makar neki od vas. So, there are several, several basketball players and they're passing the ball. Some of them are in white shirts and some of them are in black shirts. Znači imamo nekoliko uh, košarkaše, uh, šestorica, neki su u belim dresovima, a neki u crnim. U crni. And we are asked to make sure to count how many times the ball is passed between teams. 
I a, naš zadatak je da prebrojimo koliko puta a, se lopta doda između timova. So while all of us are busy uh, following up the exchange, there is a guy in a huge gorilla suit walking in the middle of these people. I dok mi uh, pažljivo posmatramo kako lopta ide od jednog do drugih, pojavljuje se čovek obučen u od, kostim gorile i ide na sred terena. And, and it's not that he's in the corner or, 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 or anything like that. He's walking in the middle among these players. I on nije negde u čošku, on je u samom centru među ovim igračima. And at some point he even jumps and starts, you know, pounding his chest. I u jednom trenutku je čak počeo da skače da se udara po grudima. So what do you think? What percentage of people miss to perceive this gorilla? I šta mislite, koji je procenat ljudi koji nije ni primetio ovog gorilla? So 50%. It's not that bad. 50%. So 50%. And I, I, I've been one of them. I ja sam bio jedan od njih. So, this experiment was done to explore importance of attention in perception. I ovaj eksperiment je bio učinjen da se ukaže na važnost pažnje u percepciji. So, it's not only important that we have healthy brains with healthy chemistry with appropriate exposure during early life, but our attention has to be focused on the right spot. Dakle, nije dovoljno samo da imamo zdrav mozak, a hemijski sastav mozga, kao i stimulus koji dolazi, izlaganje stimulusu u toku odrastanja, već je potrebno i da naša pažnja bude pravilno fokusirana. We assume that we are able to see, if we are able to hear, if we are able to touch, if we are able to smell, if we are able to ta- taste, that we are able to perceive reality accurately. Mi pretpostavljamo da ako možemo da pomirišemo, dotaknemo, vidimo, čujemo i tako dalje, da mi možemo a, ispravno da doživimo realnost oko nas. But the truth is that there are many factors necessary for us in order to per- perceive accurately. Ali istina je u tome da postoji mnogi faktori koji treba da budu zadovoljeni da bi smo mi mogli da doživimo uh, svet na ispravan način. And there are two important messages from these stories. Postoje uh, dve vrlo važne poruke ovim pričama. One is that perception failure ranges from devastating diseases to uh, not focusing your attention properly. Uh, prvo je da uh, nemogućnost uh, pravilne percepcije ide od vrlo teških oblika bolesti do s- prosto nemogućnosti da se fokusiramo. And, and the second message from, from these stories is that people who were misperceiving the world were not aware of their problem. A druga stvar je da ljudi koji nisu dobro shvatali svet oko sebe da nisu bili svesni toga. Which brings us brings us to a key question. Što nas dovodi do ključnog pitanja. Is it possible that each one of us and humanity as as whole Da li je moguće da svi mi zajedno kao i uh, čitav ljudski rod that we have constant perception failure. Da konstantno imamo uh, pogrešnu percepciju ili shvatanje realnosti. We have studied last night a little bit about brain structure and function through three paintings. Uh, Sinoć smo malo razgovarali o strukturi mozga i funkcijama posmatrajući tri uh, slike, umetničke slike. This morning, earlier this morning, we spoke, uh, we discussed importance of sleep for our normal brain functioning. Ovog jutra smo govorili o važnosti sna za normalnu funkciju mozga. But I would like us to study truth as a factor in our perception. Ali želo bi da sada se pozabijemo, prostudiramo istinu kao faktor u uh, ispravnoj percepciji. What happens to our brains if we are exposed to non-truths? Šta se dešava u našem mozgu ako smo izloženi neistinama? Truth is a little bit more complicated to explain than healthy food or healthy sleep or healthy brain structures. A istina malo teže objasniti za razliku od zdrave hrane ili zdravih struktura u mozgu. Tr- truth is typically defined as something that corresponds to the reality. A istina je uh, uglavnom objašnjena kao nešto što korespondira ili odgovara realnosti. No, I don't want to go into deep into philosophy, but reality is something that's objective, that's outside of us. A, da ne idemo u filozofiju, ali realnost je nešto što je objektivno i što je van nas. So our ability to perceive reality is our ability to see that objective truth in our minds. 
I naša mogućnost da shvatimo realnost bi trebala da bude jednaka naša mogućnost da shvatimo istinu o objektima koji su van nas u svom umu. In order to study this really complicated question, especially if we assume that all of us have problem with perception. I da bismo mogli da razmatramo i studiramo ovako kompleksno pitanje sa pretpostavkom da mi nemamo problem sa percepcijom. I would like us to study two Bible characters. Volio bih da se pozavimo sa dva biblijska karaktera. One of them is a couple. A jedan od njih je par. The reason I'm picking Bible stories, Bible examples, is because Bible is very unbiased. Bible presents good and bad with no filters. Zašto volim da izaberem biblijsku priču? Zato što Biblija je neutralna i ona prezentuje i opisuje i dobre i loše stvari bez neke selektivnosti. So, let's start. Case study number one. So, primer za proučavanje broj 1. We're going to read Genesis 2.25 and Genesis 3.6.7 and 8. Čitat ćemo prvu Mojsijevu, drugo poglavlje, 25 stih. We already read these texts, but I think it's important to repeat them. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. A behu oboje goli, Adam i žena mu, i ne beše ih sramota. And then we'll go to chapter 3, starting with verse 6. Da idemo u treće poglavlje. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Dakle, idemo sad u prvu Mojsije, u treće poglavlje, šesti stih. I žena, videći da je rodna drveto dobar za jelo i da ga je milina gledati, i da je drvo vrlo drago radi znanja, uzabra roda snjega i okusi, pa dade im užu svojemu, te i on okusi. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sued fig leaves together and made themselves covering. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among trees of garden. Tada im se otvoriše oči i videše da su goli pa spletoše lišća smokova i načiniše sebi pregače. I začuše glas gospoda Boga koji iđaše po vrtu kad zahladi. I sakri se Adam i žena mu ispred gospoda Boga među drveta u vrtu. So what has changed? They knew that they were naked in chapter 2, but they had no issues with that. What has changed between chapter 2 and chapter 3? Dakle, šta se desilo između poglavlja 2 i 3? U drugom poglavlju su bili goli, ali nisu s tim imali problema, međutim u trećem pogledu imaju problema s tim. The truth is, they perceived lie as a truth. Istina je da su oni doživeli laž kao istinu. They were told that if they switch their allegiance from God to this beautiful creature with wings, that they will be wiser. Njima je bilo rečeno da ako oni preusmere svoje poverenje sa Boga na ovu lepo stvorenje sa krilima, da će oni biti mudri. It was not really possible for them to test if that was the truth or not, but objectively we know that was a lie. A njima nije bilo moguće da testiraju, da znaju da li je to istina ili ne, ali mi znamo danas objektivno da je to bila laž. Another important thing why it's good to study Adam and Eve and effects of, of, of lie to their brains is this was their first exposure. A drugi razlog zašto je zanimljivo proučavati Adama i Evu u ovom kontekstu zato što je ovo bio prvi put da su oni bili izloženi laži. So we can say this was a controlled experiment. There was no lie. And then there was lie, and we look into what changed. Možemo da kažemo da je bio kontrolisani eksperiment. Bilo je vreme kad nije bilo laži, i sad je vreme kad ima laži, mi možemo da vidimo kako se faktori promenili. So the first thing that changed when they accepted a lie in their brains is their perception of themselves. Dakle, prva stvar koja se promenila kada su prihvatili laž, jeste da se promenila njihova percepcija, shvatanje o sebi samima. They had to cover themselves. Bilo je potrebno da se pokriju. Now, they 
it's not only that they change perception of themselves, they, they change perception of another human being. I ne samo da se promenila uh, percepcija njih samih, već i percepcija ili viđenje drugih osoba. They started blaming each other. Počeli su da optužuju jedno drugo. And as we go through the book of Genesis, there were not only uh, accusations, but they were, there were murders, and several chapters later there were instead of one wife, two wives. I a, vidimo da su se dešavale druge stvari vremenom, a, ne samo da, da je bilo optuživanja, već u prvom Mojsijevu nalazimo da su se dešavale ubistva, a, onda je došlo do mnogo ženstva i tako dalje. In general, we want to show off good things and we want to hide bad things. A, u generalnom smislu mi želimo da prikažemo dobre stvari, a da sakrijemo loše. For example, if we have a really nice car, we want to make sure we park it uh, in front of the venue where we are going. Na primjer ako imamo jako lep auto, onda se potrudimo da parkiramo ispred zgrade da idemo na vidljivo mesto. If we don't have a nice car, we're going to park two blocks away. Ako nemamo lep auto, onda ćemo se parkiramo dva bloka uh, daleko. That's exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. They had perfect bodies, but they still wanted to hide. They still wanted to park two blocks away. I to je ono što se desilo Adamu i Evi. Oni su imali perfektna tela, ali još uvijek su želi da se parkiraju dva bloka u daljini. And that tells us about the effect of a lie on our brains. I ovo nam govori o efektu laži na naš mozak. Irrespective how we look, when we have lies in our brains, we feel ashamed, we feel, we feel guilty, we want to hide. A, bez obzira a, kako izgledamo, ako smo prihvatili laži, ona je u našem umu, mi osjećamo sramotu i mi želimo da se sakrijemo. And that's, that's truth also in our relationships with other people. I to je istina isto tako u našim odnosima sa ljudima. We typically perceive the other people through our personalities and if we are bad persons, we will typically perceive other people as bad. A, mi uglavnom shvatamo ljude oko nas tako a, što ih filtriramo kroz našu ličnost. I u odnosu na našu ličnost shvatamo i druge, tako da ako su mi loši, na primjer, onda ćemo misliti da su drugi ljudi isto tako loši. Ellen G. White put this really nicely in Christ Object Lessons. Ellen White je ovo lepo opisala u Hristovim očiglednim povukama. The white robe of innocence was worn by our first parents when they were pl- placed uh, by God in Holy Eden. A bela odeća nevinosti je bila... A, a, nošena od strane naših roditelja kada su oni bili postavljeni od strane Boga u sveti Edem. They lived in perfect conformity to the will of God. Oni su živeli u perfektnoj saglasnosti sa voljom Božjom. All the strength of their affections was given to their heavenly Father. Sva snaga njihovih osjećanja i odanosti je bila data njihovom nebeskom Ocu. A beautiful soft light, the light of God and shrouded the holy pair. A predivno a, blago svetlo, svetlo Božje je obavilo sveti par. This robe of light was a symbol of their spiritual garments uh, of heavenly innocence. A, ova odeća od svetla je bio simbol njihovi, njihove duhovne odeće nebeske nevinosti. But when sin entered they severed their connection with God and the light that had encircled them departed. Ali kada je greh ušao, a, to je pokvarilo, povredilo njihov odnos sa Bogom, njihov povezanost sa Bogom i svetlost kojih je okruživala je odstupila. Naked and ashamed, they tried to supply the place of heavenly, gar- heavenly garments by sewing together fig leaves for covering. A, goli i osramoćeni, oni su pokušali da zamenu ovu nebesku odeću time što će sašiti a, lišće od smokvinog drveta. Small elements introduced in our brain ecosystem will change the whole system. A mali elementi koji su a, a, unešeni u naš a, ekosistem će promijeniti ceo sistem. Možda nije ekosistem. Me, možda nije ekosistem. Non-truth will affect the way how our brains operate, frequently starting with perception. I neistine će uticati na to kako 
naš mozak funkcioniše, posebno počevši sa našim svatanjem realnosti. Faulty perception due to internalization of bad, due to causiness with non-truth, due to cherished deception, will lead to poor self-image and by extension to broken relationships. Ova pogrešna percepcija koja je uzrokovana neistinama će uticati na vrlo loše mišljenje o sebi i isto tako će uticati na naš odnos sa ljudima. This is the root cause of human suffering, frustration, abuse, sexual anomalies and violence within the most intimate human relationship within the families. Ovo je glavni uzrok zlostavljanja u porodicama, seksualnih problema, poremećaja i drugih sličnih problema koje se javljaju u porodicama. This was case study number one. I ovo je bio primer za proučavanje broj jedan. Case study number two is Peter and we will read John 18, 4 through 10. A drugi primjer koji ćemo proučavati se odnosi na Petra i mi ćemo čitati iz druge Jovanove, no, Jevanđelje po Jovanu 18. poglavlje 4. do 10. stih. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, to people who came to arrest him, whom are you seeking? A... I Isus je došao pred ljude koji su ga tražili i pitao ih, koga vi tražite? The answer to him, Jesus of Nazareth. A oni mu odgovoriše, Isusa Nazarećanina. Jesus said to them, I am he, and Judas who betrayed him, who betrayed him also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Isus im reče, ja sam, a s njima stajaše Juda koji ga izdavaše, a kad im reče, ja sam, izmakoše se natrag i popadaše na zemlju. Then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Onda ih opet zapite Isus, koga tražite? A oni rekoše, Isusa Nazarećanina. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. Isus im odgovori, kazah vam da sam ja. Ako dakle mene tražite, ostavite ove nek idu. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke of. Those whom you gave me, I lost none. Da se izvrši reč što reče, ne izgubih ni jednoga od onih koje si mi dao. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and stuck the high priest servant and cut off his right ear. The servant name was Malchus. A Simon Petar imaše nož, pa ga izvadi i udari slugu po glavara svešteničkoga i odseče mu desno uho, a sluzi beše ime Malho. This is a very well known story, but I would like us to pay attention on perception. Ovo je vrlo poznata priča, ali ja bih želeo da obratimo pažnje na percepciju. Jesus saw the armed crowd. Isus je video naoruženu gomilu. But Jesus was not hiding and Jesus was not armed. Ali Isus se nije sakrivao, niti je bio naoružen. He just calmly asked them, who are you looking for? On ih je samo blago pitao, koga vi tražite? The armed crowd said they are asking for Jesus. Naorožena gomila je rekla, mi tražimo Isusa. But instead of seeing a single, weak, unarmed human being, they saw somebody that caused them to fall to the ground. Ali umjesto da su videli slabašno, nenaoruženo ljudsko biće, oni su videli nekoga ili nešto što ih je učinilo da popadaju na zemlju. Jesus had accurate perception. Isus je imao ispravnu percepciju. People who came to arrest him had accurate perception. I ljudi koji su došli da ga zarobe su imali ispravnu percepciju. But Peter did not have percepciju. Ali Petar nije imao ispravnu percepciju. Peter sees Jesus, sees the crowd, sees a servant within the crowd and feels threatened. We know that he felt threatened because he's the one who started defending himself. Petar vidi nešto drugo, on vidi ljude, vidi naružene ljude, on se osjećao u opasnosti i jednostavno u nespokoju. It's very interesting there was no violence before Peter started it. Interesantno je da nije bilo nikakvog nasilja dok ga Petar nije započeo. And it was always peculiar to me that in this action-filled story there is a notion of servant's name. I interesantno mi je jako da u ovoj priči punoj akcije postoji primer ime sluge. 
Why would anybody put the name of the servant? Like, Jesus is being arrested, the world is coming to the end, and we need to hear that the servant's name is Malki. Zašto bi morali uopšte da znamo da je ime sluge Malho, zar nije važnije govoriti o kraju i svom dolazku? But it is interesting because Malchus, Malchus means the king. Interesantno je da a, Malchus a, znači car. And it is interesting that instead of instead Peter instead of seeing a servant, he thought that he he is seeing a king. I a, interesantno je da a, umesto da je video slugu, on je mislio da je video cara. Peter suffered from misperception. I Petar je patio od pogrešne percepcije. He suffered from misperception so much that he missed person's head on a close range. I on je toliko patio od pogrešne percepcije da je promašio čovekovu glavu sa uh, velike blizine. And cut off only his ear. I odsekao samo njegovu uvo. But that's not the only thing that he missed. He missed so much in this story. Ali to nije sve što je on propustio, on propustio mnoge, mnogo više u ovoj priči. The question is why Peter missed all these things. I pitanje je zašto je Petar propustio sve ove stvari. And we should probably study three and a half years of Peter spending with Jesus. Vjerovatno bi trebali da proučavamo ove tri pogodine što je Petar proveo sa Isusom. Jesus was talking about humble life, about heavenly kingdom, about life that is about to come. Ja, Isus je govorio o poniznom životu, o nebeskom carstvu i životu koji će tek doći. Peter was always thinking about earthly kingdom, about winning over their enemies and about glory on this earth. A Peter je stalno razmišljao o zemaljskom carstvu, o pobedi nad neprijateljem i slavi na ovoj zemlji. We can say he was voluntarily cherishing non-truth in his mind. A, možemo reći da je on uh, slobodnim izborom priželjkivao neistinu i prizivao je svoj, svoj um. And as a result of that, we see religious violence. I kao rezultat toga mi uh, vidimo religioznu netrpeljivost i nasilje. And I would push the envelope a little bit and say that most of our uh, religious intolerance or intolerance of any other kind comes from us cherishing non-truth despite knowing the truth. I bit ću slobodan da ovo još malo više naglasim i kažem a, da svo nasilje, svo religiozno nasilje i netrpeljivost zapravo potiče od a, te naše želje da prihvatamo neistine. Our wish and our will to hold to non-truth changes our brain. A, naš izbor i naša želja da se držimo neistina menja naš um. And we can measure that objectively right now. I mi to možemo da izmerimo vrlo objektivno i to sad. There are really nice set of experiments by a scientist called uh, Dr. Dan Ariely from Duke University. Postoji uh, jedan lep broj eksperimenata koji je Dr. Ariely iz Duke Univerziteta napravio. And he showed that people who voluntarily lie for, for, for their benefit, certain areas in their brain called amygdala that we learned about yesterday, they, their activity decreases. Uh, I on je dokazao naučno da ljudi koji lažu po izboru svojevoljno da se određeni deo njegov, njihovog mozga i migdali uh, se menjaju. Amygdala is like an alarm. Something bad is happening. Uh, amygdala je kao jedan alarm koji ukazuje da se nešto loše dešava. And when we lie, we know that something bad is happening, so amygdala is very active. A mi kad lažemo, u nama je osjećaj da se nešto loše dešava i amigdala reaguje u tom trenutku. But if we continue to lie, the alarm gets shut off. Ali ako mi nastavimo da lažemo, u jednom trenutku alarm se samo isključi. So what all of this means for you and me? Šta ovo sve znači za vas i za mene? I would like to draw two conclusions. Hteo bih da predložim dva zaključka. The truth is personified. A Istina je otelovljena. We are or we are not the truth. A, mi, mi jesmo ili mi nismo istina. The truth doesn't exist somewhere in the outer world. A, istina ne postoji, ne prebiva negde u vanjskom svetu. It's pagan teaching that their world of truth, of ideas and material world, the, it's pagan idea that we have dualism. A, to je paganska ideja da postoji dualizam uh, između sveta istine i materijalnog sveta. 
And the other point is we have to live consistent lives. I druga poenta je mi treba da živimo a konzistentne a stabilne ujednačene hvala živote. Because if we know the truth but we don't live it, the poison of lies will change our brains. Jer ako znamo istinu a ne živimo je onda će opet a, otrov neistine zagaditi naš um. Now we all know the truth. We cannot be absolute truth. A, mi svi znamo istinu, ali ne možemo znati apsolutnu istinu. We are not the absolute truth. We are? We are not absolute oh, truth. Mi nismo apsolutna istina. For example, over the last week, I was helping some patients with epilepsy, which I think it's a good thing. I ate some healthy or less healthy food. I had really animated uh, discussion on social issues with some of my friends that I don't agree with, and I didn't find enough time to spend uh, to pay attention to my parents. Na primjer, u protekle sedmici ja sam izlečio, lečio nekoliko pacijenata od epilepsije, jeo sam zdravu i možda manje zdravu hranu, a, imao sam neke socijalne interakcije i nisam imao dovoljno vremena da posjetim svojim roditeljima. So it's mixed bag, bad and good. So, uh, sve pomešano u vreći dobre i loše stvari. So we have in ourselves both good and bad. Tako da mi u nama imamo i dobro i loše. But we crave good, we crave truth because we don't want to feel shame. Ali mi čeznemo za istinom zato što ne želimo da osjećamo sramotu. So what's the cure for us? Tako da šta je iscelenje za nas? How to fix our vision, how to fix our perception. Kako da popravimo svoju viziju i svoju percepciju? And, and how to fix our inner selves. I kako da popravimo naše unutrašnje stanje. I think the prescription is in Revelation 3:17 to 20. Ja verujem da se lek nalazi u rečima zapisanim u knjizi Otkrivenja, treće poglavlje od 17. do 20. stih. And I'll read the whole segment. Because you say I am rich, I have become wealthy and I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you might be rich and white garments that you might be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you might see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come to him and dine with him and he with me jer govoriš bogat sam i obogatio sam se i ništa ne potrebujem, a ne znaš da si ti nesrećan i nevoljan i siromah i slep i gol. Savetujem te da kupiš u mene zlata žeženog u ognju da se obogatiš i bele haljine da se obučeš i da se ne pokaže sramota golotinje tvoje i masti očinjom pomaži oči svoje da vidiš. Jer koje god ljubim one i karam i poučavam, postaraj se dakle i pokaj se. Evo stojim na vratima i kucam. Ako ko čuje glas moj i otvori vrata, ući ću k njemu i večeraću s njime i on sa mnom. The Lord is our truth. He is the true Malchus the king from the story of Peter. Gospod je naša istina i on je pravi Malha iz uh, priče iz evanđelja koju smo čitali. But his name doesn't end here. He is the priest by the order of Melchizedek of Genesis, the king of righteousness. Ali njegova priča se ovde ne završava, on je Melchizedek Car pravednosti. He is also Jahve Cikenu of Jeremiah, the Lord of our righteousness. On je takođe Jahve Cikenu iz Jeremijine knjige, što znači Gospod naša pravda. He is the one who can impart righteousness, the truth, into us. On je onaj koji može da, da unese istinu i pravdu u nas. He is the one who can resolve our tragedy. On je onaj koji može da reši našu tragediju. He is the one who is giving us life in abundance by enabling us to truly connect with him and with our fellow human beings. On je koji nam daje život u izobilju, ali isto tako i omogućava da se potpuno spojimo sa njim i sa drugim uh, bićima oko nas. The only thing that we have to do is to pay attention, hear the knocking and open the door and then dine with him. I jedinu stvar koju treba da Učinimo jeste da obratimo pažnju, da čujemo kucanje na vratima, da otvorimo vrata i da večeramo sa njim. Shall we do that? 
hoćemo li to da učinimo. Amen. Amen.